Hello YouTube friends and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how I drank six cups of coffee per day for an entire week. We're going to be talking about all sorts of things, including my side effects, including what I felt during this time, why did I do this in the first place, all sorts of good stuff. And I have prepared a list of some questions that we're going to dive into here. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with the question, why? Why did I drink so much coffee for a week? Is this an experiment that I did? Is this naturally what I did? Uh, to answer that question, this was completely natural in the sense that I just became a little bit addicted to coffee. I was kind of depending on it in a sense. And I really don't know why because I never used to be a big coffee drinker. But I think what happened is uh, as I've been drinking coffee more and more, it's helped me stay focused and stay alert. When I'm working, when I'm studying, when I'm doing all sorts of things where I need to be productive, I've found coffee to be a nice supplement to allow me to get my work done efficiently and effectively. So that's kind of why it naturally occurred instead of me actually planning this out. I just kept going for more cups and cups of coffee. And then I decided, I was like, dude, I am like six days into this challenge naturally. I might as well have six more cups the next day. And obviously, I don't recommend this by any means to anyone. Uh, it's probably too much caffeine to be consuming. And let's talk about the benefits. What kind of benefits did I see from this experiment? Uh, in terms of those, I saw increased productivity. I saw my addiction to coffee kind of taking over in a sense. I was like not even doing this as an experiment. Like I said, I was just kind of naturally making myself cup after cup after cup. And even when the coffee got cold, sometimes I would still drink it because I knew that the benefits of the coffee outweighed me actually just, you know, reheating it or so sometimes I would reheat it just to get that warmth of the coffee. But, you know, it, in terms of the benefits, just the really big one of increased productivity and increased focus. Those were the, the two big ones. Moving on to the negative side effects of drinking this much coffee. Drinking that much coffee per day definitely affected my sleep schedule in a sense that I was still able to sleep but I wasn't able to sleep right away. And I also was sleeping at different times throughout the night. I would stay up later because the coffee was still in my system. But at the same time, my body was like, hey, you need to sleep. So we're gonna ignore all this caffeine and we're just gonna let you sleep instead. So it's like, I could have chose to stay up longer if I wanted to, but I knew that I had to sleep because uh, my body definitely needs eight hours of sleep each night. Uh, or else I fall into sleep debt, and we don't like sleep debt. It's not fun at all. I'll make a separate video on sleep debt. In fact, I'm going to write that down right now because sleep debt is such a critical topic. So that brings me to my next question. Did my sleep suffer? So I know I mentioned that my sleep was definitely affected, but did it actually suffer in any way? And the answer is no. I was just, the only thing it impacted was the time in which I would go to bed, and it didn't really affect my quality of sleep that much. In terms of, I did notice though, I was waking up a little sooner than I usually would before that eight hour mark hit. So I think if I were to continue doing this long term, it would affect my sleep more than it did during that week. Because I did notice that after that week had passed, there was a day where I slept more than usual. And I think that was me recovering from my sleep debt that had occurred over that week. So it is important to note that in the short term, the sleep did not really seem that affected. However, if you did this long term, it would most likely affect things a lot more than it did for me during these seven days. So the next question is, how did my body react to that much caffeine? Was I jittery? Was I anxious? What happened? And honestly, no, I did not feel jittery. I didn't feel anxious. I did feel just more alert than usual. I felt a little bit... Um, stimulated in the sense that I was just like, okay, let's do this. Let's go. Let's get to work. Let's do this. But it wasn't to the point where I was like shaking. It was more to the point where I was just like, okay, this is kind of new, but it's not overwhelming. It wasn't controlling me. It was, well, in, in a sense it was because I kept going back for more coffee, but the caffeine itself wasn't controlling my body in that sense. Next question. Did I struggle to stay hydrated? Yes, hydration is a big factor that you need to keep in mind when you drink that much coffee. 
because I've noticed that the coffee in a way dehydrates you. I'm not sure why. I don't know the science behind why the coffee dehydrates me. If I did some basic research, I could probably tell you that, but I did notice that I wasn't drinking enough water and there is water inside coffee. However, I think there's stuff in the coffee that still dehydrates me because I did not feel I did not feel like my thirst was quenched. I felt dehydrated and I would solve my dehydration by drinking more coffee at times. So not the best scenario at all. So did I feel dependent on coffee? Yes, I definitely did feel dependent, especially since I was doing this from a just natural experiment type of thing. I, I didn't actually like force this experiment. I was naturally having this much coffee. So I, I did feel dependent on it and I have reduced my intake since the end of this experiment. And uh, even though it wasn't really an experiment, I've just decided to reduce my coffee intake because that much coffee, first of all, it, it gets a little expensive to drink that much coffee. By the way, I'm making all my coffee at home. I'm not buying six different Starbucks drinks that would just not be affordable. But anyways, so yeah, basically when it comes to my dependence, I've definitely felt dependent on it, but I'm glad I was able to control myself after the experiment was over. I've decided to cut back to three to four cups a day, which is less than six cups. So we're, we're celebrating that factor. But yeah, I would still like to reduce that to probably two to three cups, but we're getting there. Next question, are there any withdrawal symptoms that I've experienced after stopping the massive intake of coffee? And um, honestly, no, there have not been. Uh, I, I do feel like if I uh, would have continued this experiment or so-called experiment, I feel like there would have been with more withdrawal symptoms, but the, the experiment was only for seven days. So it's like with seven days, it's not really enough to make a huge impact on how the body is reacting because it's not that long term. It's in the short term. The body is very adaptable. So when I said, hey, it's time to cut back, my body was like, okay, seems fair. We'll cut back. So that's kind of the relationship that me and my body have with each other. So yeah, it was kind of pretty cool in that regard that there were no withdrawal symptoms. And I'm happy about that because because drinking that many cups of coffee, it gets to the point where like one, two, and three cups make a difference in my day. But after that, four, five, and six don't help me nearly as much as those first three in terms of being focused and stimulated on the work that I have to do. Will I change my coffee habits because of this experiment? Uh, in terms of changing them, I don't think so. I was having three to four cups of coffee before this experiment, and I'm currently having three to four cups of coffee now. So I really feel like it depends on the day for me how many cups of coffee I have. Uh, it just depends on what my body's craving and how hydrated I am, but uh, it also depends on how much work I need to get done each day. So there are some factors that go into my coffee intake, but because of this experiment, I will not be changing any habits that I had before. It really comes down to how many cups of coffee my body naturally wants to intake each day. And my final question is, do I regret doing this so-called experiment or do I regret doing this journey with massive amounts of coffee intake in general? Uh, no, I don't regret it. I think it's really cool to understand more about your body and how things work related to you know, caffeine intake. I've done previous experiments before about sleep and stuff like that and, and how sleep debt works and, and the effects of not sleeping. I'm really gonna do a future video about sleep debt because I have done a personal study on how the body reacts to lack of sleep. I intentionally tried to stay up all night, one night, and I just noticed the effects immediately the next day. And it was just so interesting to kind of do that experiment and to really get a gauge for what my body needs. Now, I don't recommend that you do these experiments per se, but if you are curious how you know your body works, you know, kind of increasing your limit to see how your body reacts to something like caffeine you know, it, it's like, it's good information to know, but I don't recommend you do anything like this because, you know, it's probably not good for you. But at the end of the day, we are all dying as we speak. And really, what is good for us? Because anything we do, we're getting one second closer to death anyway. So you just got to keep that in mind, like when you're doing experiments like this. And I don't recommend any of this, but if you are curious and want to try something similar, just be aware of what your body can handle and, and slowly increase the amount. Don't just jump from no coffee ever to six cups of coffee. I don't recommend that, but um, yeah, just be careful, be smart, have common sense when you're doing this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, do I regret it? 
No, I'm glad I did it. And it was really cool to see the results from this so-called experiment. And yeah, guys, that's all I got for this video today. Hopefully you found this video informative. Hopefully you found it useful in some way shape or form. I hope you learned something new. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to take a like smash to the like button. You know, just click that like button. Really does help me out. I really do appreciate that. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below what you think about this video, what you think about what I did with this experiment uh, or so-called experiment. Like I said, it really just came up out of the blue because I was like, this is kind of weird. I should really document this. So, yeah, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace.